this week on Second Nature, our friend the fern. Prisoners of Gravity, this is Commander Rick with some signalless interruptus to stimulate your cortex. I've been looking out the porthole lately at the earth overhead or underfoot, watching the fluffy clouds mixing with the smoke of oil well fires and burning rainforests. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still, somehow it's clouds illusions, I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. But then, how can you understand clouds? Chaos theory, I've heard about that. Didn't someone write a book about chaos theory? What was it called? Right, right. Who was it wrote that book? James Glick, right. I have that book somewhere, don't I? Where is it? Oh, right, yeah. Out there with my clean socks and my pudding pops. That's hard vacuum out there. Let's just call him up. Nancy, can you plug into James Glick? Chaos theory is a new branch of mathematics, or science. Ah, uh, James, it's Commander Rick. I live in a satellite... I see, I'm orbiting up in the... I'm a high school student from Oshawa working on a term paper, and I can't get a copy of your book. Could you possibly explain chaos theory? Chaos theory is a terrible, unlikely name for a, a new, fast-growing area of science that's devoting itself to exploring a whole realm of phenomena that traditionally science just felt powerless in the face of. Turbulence in fluids, uh, unpredictability in a whole range of complex systems from the weather to economies, um, erratic rhythms in uh, physiology, in the human heart, in uh, or breathing rhythms. What they all have, have in common is that they're erratic, disorderly, chaotic. I recall that chaos involves fractals. Now, a fractal is a... a um, it's a fractal is a mathematical description of patterns that repeat themselves in different scales, for example, in nature. Sure, well, we've all had that experience where someone takes a picture of a large cliff or a giant tree or, or a big boulder and they say, you go stand in the picture so people will get a sense of the scale. Who came up with the name fractal? I don't recall there being a doctor fractal. It was coined by uh, the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, who... Uh, who didn't just coin the word, but invented this whole field of fractal geometry. Uh, it was his conviction that, <coughs> that traditional Euclidean geometry, which, which the kind of geometry we all learn in school, which concerns itself with circles and triangles and ellipses, smooth shapes, that that geometry wasn't well suited to describing nature, to describing uh, clouds and mountains and lightning bolts. Uh, he likes to say uh, clouds are not spheres, mountains are not pyramids. Uh, it, was, it was his conviction that there is another kind of geometry, uh, simple in another way, simple in its basic mathematics, that produces this very rich complexity that we see around us. Uh, James, what is the buttermilk effect? I mean, butterfly. What, what is the butterfly effect? The butterfly effect is the name that's um, been given, for better or worse, to um, a discovery that was made in the early 1960s by a meteorologist at MIT named Edward Lorenz. Uh, Lorenz was trying to understand um, some, of the, some of the first problems that you would have to deal with in uh, trying to model the weather on a computer. What he discovered uh, through a series of accidents is uh, that, that deterministic weather forecasting over a period of more than even a few weeks is absolutely impossible. The reason is the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is uh, the, the 
simple but strange fact that a tiny disturbance in the atmosphere, as small as the flapping of a butterfly's wings, propagates upwards uh, so rapidly through uh, scales of little swirls of dust to larger eddies to vast movements of wind that within, say, a month or so, that slight disturbance can change the course of storm systems all the way on the other side of the globe. Well, if a little butterfly can change the world's weather in a few months, why did it take a big idea like chaos theory so long to catch on? Lorenz made his discovery. It was very mathematical in nature, very technical. Uh, it sounds striking when I say it that way, but he didn't say it that way at first. It was, uh, it was a matter of some equations and some uh, arcane sounding language and it disappeared into the pages of a meteorology journal in 1963. Really it wasn't until a good 10 years after Lorenz published this work that people started to realize how important it was. And at first it wasn't other meteorologists who realized it. It was mathematicians who were interested in these more general problems of chaos. And yet now it seems every branch of science is interested. Biologists who study seemingly random fluctuations in animal populations, engineers studying metals and crystals, seismologists who are trying to predict earthquakes, even people who design nuclear reactors are using chaos to simulate nuclear power accidents. Now a lot of this research is on the cutting edge of science, but on the other hand, people have been wondering about clouds for centuries. Why didn't someone stumble across chaos years ago? What made the theory possible now? What's made chaos possible has been uh, smaller computers with graphics capability that scientists could interact with very, very quickly and casually. Uh, enter some numbers, watch a pattern on a computer screen, change the numbers a little bit, watch how the patterns change. Uh, don't just do a calculation, but see how the nature of the calculation can change if you tinker with it a little bit. Um, that's, the, that's the sort of um, computing with, with a spirit of play, really, that, that's made a lot of this science possible now. Computers, eh? Well, let's talk to a computer hacker. Caleb Howard uses chaos theory to produce all sorts of computer graphics. Ah, oh, Caleb, it's Commander Rick. How you doing, Rick? Well, it's, you know, chaotic. Uh, what's that you're working on there on the computer? Can you tell me? Ah, uh, actually, I'm playing around with, uh, with my computer here and working with <clears throat> applications of uh, fractal and chaos mathematics. From your standpoint as a computer hacker, what is chaos theory? What is chaos theory? Chaos theory is a theory which states that in nature you will find things which are similar uh, through scale. That is, on the large scale, they look very much as they do on a, long, a small scale. So if you're looking at a coastline of a country, it's uh, pretty crinkly, and as you zoom in and you're looking at a coastline of just a small beach, it's pretty much the same amount of crinkliness uh, no matter how much you zoom in. Does that mean if you zoom in far enough on a potato, it starts to look like Prince Edward Island? Probably not. So Caleb, what has been the impact of fractals on computer animation? With computers using fractal algorithms, you can very nicely mimic what nature does. So previously, when you're generating a picture using a computer of, say, a tree, you don't end up with a tree. You end up with a cylinder for a trunk, and it just doesn't look very realistic. Now, with fractal mathematics, you can define sort of the way a tree works. The computer will build the tree, and it ends up looking very realistic. 